downtime today. There it is. A couple of people asked me to record this one. All right, so, so what we've come up with is kind of a four-step process to help you plan out your professional development um, in a way that's useful to you and useful to your clients. And all of these steps are written out on the Learn IT website. Um, we're gonna cover a lot of what's on the website. So by coming today, you're getting most of what's written there. Um, there is some more detail there, so it's good to review it when you get a chance um, uh, after today. The other part of Learn IT is um, a, a DocuSign form. Basically, after you find found whatever you want to do for your professional development, uh, usually that's something that requires a purchase, and this DocuSign form keeps track of that. Um, the, there's kind of a workflow to the DocuSign uh, form. It goes to your manager first. So you, you fill this out. It goes to your manager to approve it. It then goes to Ray to approve it. And then it goes to the IT business office um, to do all the purchasing things. We'll go, through, we'll go through the form a little bit more later. So back, back on the website, uh, the, the first step is um, uh, called wrapping your head around it. So professional development is kind of a big opportunity, uh, especially considering how tight the budgets are um, right now. Um, so that, that we get to do this is great. Um, it's also though, despite that, it's economical. Um, so last year, professional development only took up about 1% of, of the budget for the whole year. And so when you think about, you know, everything that we all learned, who, whoever took professional development last year, um, it's, it's a lot of huge advancements that we were able to bring back, you know, to our clients. Um, on, the, on the website page for this step, I wrote that professional development can change your life. Um, that might seem like a hyperbole, but if you think about like what you could do with a new certification or some kind of training that branched out your expertise in some new area, um, what that could bring to you to bring your to make your job easier, uh, but also open up you know options potentially for a raise or a promotion. Um, there's probably not a whole lot of raises or promotions going on right now, but you know assuming eventually that will get returned back to normal, um, this is something you can do now to prepare for when that when that opens up again. So like I said, step one is called wrap your head around it. So that's wrapping your head around where you are in your career now and what you could potentially expand into in the future and how professional development could help with that. Um, so like what skills could help you do your job better now, uh, make your job easier now. Um, and like I said, more importantly, like what are the, what opportunities could it open up um, for a potential future career um, that, that taking some class or some, whatever the professional development is could make that possible. Um, we wrote up some questions that you could, like sample questions that you could ask yourself at this step to help you kind of think through it. Um, these questions and a couple more are written down on the web page, so you don't have to worry about like writing these down now or taking a screenshot. Um, and these are also just kind of a starting point to get you thinking in this way. Um, now those can be kind of big questions, so you should, you know, give them some, spend some time, you know, thinking about them. Uh, maybe block some time out on your calendar. Um, maybe brainstorm on, on paper instead of on the computer, if that helps you, maybe post-it notes or whatever, you know, you think might, might help you to work through it. Um, and think, you can also think about uh, who else you can discuss your ideas with that can give you some insights. Uh, maybe your manager or maybe someone uh, at UMass or somewhere else that's already working in the field that you're interested in or in an area that you're interested in learning about. Um, you can even talk to someone that doesn't even necessarily know a whole lot about a topic. So for example, um, I often, if I have a technical problem, uh, I'll, I'll talk about it with my wife, who's not really a technical person, but just by, by trying to explain it to someone else, it helps me to come up with a solution uh, myself. All right. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is titled, talk to your supervisor. Um, like I said, your manager will have to approve your plan before it gets passed on to Ray. So uh, this is the step where you, will work on getting them on board with your plan before it gets sent up. Um, so you know the term upward management. Uh, you can think about what your boss's goals are and what their needs are, and then be ready to show them how your plan will help them too. Um, all, all IT managers have been asked by Ray to help you guys plan this. And so they're gonna be motivated to help you choose something good. Uh, and remember too, you, know, you, you could potentially um, uh, take more than one professional development activity. So for example, if your boss had one thing in mind and you had something else in mind, 
you know, you could propose doing both options to them if, if they're up for it. Um, you're also individually uh, responsible for coordinating and planning your, your IT, your learn IT plan. Um, so it's on you to schedule the meeting and to present your plan and, and you know, be ready with the details and explanations when you meet. Um, and like I said, your manager has to be on board with, with the plan. They're going to, they're going to have a step in that DocuSign workflow that where they'll have to approve it, uh, before it gets moved up. So whatever you can do now to smooth out their approval. So it's just like they're, they've already seen it. They're ready to just say yes. Whatever you can do that now is better than, than waiting to submit it and then having them have to reject it for some reason. Um, here are some more questions that you can use for your meeting with your boss. Um, again, these questions are also on the Learn IT website, so you don't have to write them down now. And again, these are a starting point. It's not a complete list that you have to stick, that you have to, stick to. Um, a lot of these are, are questions that were similar to the ones that were in step one, uh, but others are more practical. You know, talking about costs and potential problems and logistical things um, and, and to identify reasons why there might be a rejection or some difficulty and then trying to figure out now before you submit anything um, how you can get past that. Okay, step three is find professional development. So that is like finding the specific things that you're going to ask to be purchased um, that would support those goals and the questions and things that you had made plans for earlier. Um, so you might have a question like, shouldn't, shouldn't this step come before talking to your manager, right? Shouldn't you go to your manager presenting to them the, the, the specific purchase that you're gonna to wanna to make? And that may be the case for you, that might be fine. Um, the Learn IT steps are kind of a suggestion for how to approach all this. Uh, if you knew a specific class or like a certification that you knew you're gonna need and that it's like no question what you're gonna find, uh, or, um, then you could jump right to this and present that to your boss. Um, the, the previous planning steps are for people who want that kind of initial kind of higher level planning before they find something specific. I mean, even if you do follow the steps as they were presented, um, uh, and you talk to your boss before you find the specific thing, and then you get to step three, and then you find that specific thing, you should still talk to your boss again, um, after this step to, you know, say, Hey, here's what I was thinking based on our previous conversations. And, and they'll we can talk about it. So you can have multiple meetings, obviously. Um, all right, so what kinds of professional development might you want, right? So it could be potentially anything that meets the goals that you've set uh, and that your boss has set for you. Um, so it could be like a one day workshop or a webinar, could even be a semester long course if you wanted. Um, it could be a conference or a certification. Uh, there are these online services like um, if you know itpro.tv uh, or Udemy or Coursera, there's a lot of those um, that, that might be relevant. Could be a book, you know, an audio book subscription potentially. Anything that you think that you can justify as something that would lead you to an improvement uh, for your professional development. If you can make a case for it, I'd suggest you know getting creative and just you know seeing what might work. Um, the worst someone could say is no, and and then you know. Um, for finding professional development, uh, uh, something to look at is that UMass Boston is a member of the uh, of the Educause and NERCOMP organizations. Uh, these are organizations that provide training, uh, most often to high, uh, staff in higher ed and IT people. Um, and so because uh, UMass is a member of both of them, and because we're a member, we get a, a big discount for those events. Um, you know, we also get uh, tuition waivers and fee waivers for taking UMass courses. So that's uh, an, a potential option, too, to look into. Uh, but you don't have to stick to just those. Um, maybe check them first to see if there's any good fits there uh, at a discounted rate. Um, but like I said, from that previous list, you know, almost anything that advances your abilities as an IT employee, uh, if you can justify it and if, if the cost is okay and if everyone's on board, then it could potentially work. So those are just some options. Um, the links for all of that, the NERCOP and the, and the EDUCAUSE, um, even for the stuff in the previous slide, uh, the IT Code TV and all that, um, the links for all of those are on the Learn IT website uh, on the step three page. So if you want to check those out, you can click those links. Oh, also, make sure to start looking early um, so that there's time for, you know, registrations and planning, uh, especially if, you know, not we're doing any in-person things so much right now, but maybe later in the year, there's some in-person thing. Uh, if there's like potentially travel or, you know, all the details that need to be worked out, the earlier, the better. Maybe there's an early bird discount for something. Um, all good reasons why you should start sooner rather than later. 
All right, step four. Last step is to actually do the request. Um, once you have everything planned out uh, and your boss is on board, kind of unofficially at least, um, and it's, it's time to submit a purchase request. So uh, finding the things that you found that you want to have purchased, you have to request those purchases. Um, at this point, I'm gonna to switch to the website. And again, this is at blogs.umb.edu slash learn IT. I'm actually gonna put that in the chat room right now. Okay, so if you wanna copy and paste that, it'll be in emails and things too, so that's another option. Um, so on this page, there are more links and more information about each of the steps that we reviewed. Um, and in the top section, there is uh, this main button that leads directly to the step four page um, to request the professional development. So if you click on that button, and again, there's a bit more information here to just make sure you got all, all the things figured out. And then there's a button towards the bottom to that loads the DocuSign form. So we click on that button. All right, so here we are in DocuSign. You'll be asked to enter your, your information and uh, your manager's information. Uh, and then you click begin signing. All right, so click the checkbox and click continue. And this is the actual uh, request form. Um, you'll be asked this series of questions, as you see, uh, you know, some questions about like what, what your goals are, some of the preceding stuff, like why is this training important to you? But then the rest of it is mostly like logistical things, you know, cost and date and things like that. Um, this goals box, like I said, in brief, it doesn't have to be super detailed. Uh, presumably you and your boss have had lots of discussions and emails about this already. So this is just to, just to remind them and summarize. Um, all right. Oh, also on this form, it uses the term PD, right? Professional development. But it, that's kind of regardless of what the PD is. So like if you were wanting to buy a book, for example, uh, what's the cost of the PD? PD in this case just means book. So just to make it simple, we use the term PD no matter what kind of professional development is, in case that's confusing. All right, so when you're done, you click finish. Um, this form doesn't have an ability to kind of automatically save. So let's say you filled out a couple of the fields and you wanna come back and work on it later. Uh, you have to click in that case, the finish later button and that will save it. It doesn't save automatically, but yeah, otherwise you click finish. So, and then clicking finish, uh, that starts the, the workflow, the DocuSign workflow. And like I said, it sends it first to your manager and the manager has to approve it. Uh, and then it sends it to Ray who has to approve it. And then it sends it to the business office, the IT business office to do all the purchasing and the record keeping. Um, at those first two approval steps, potentially uh, your manager or Ray could reject it potentially. Uh, so if that were the case, you would be notified by email. So you don't have to kind of check back on anything. You'll be notified whenever it moves through the status, whatever happens. Um, they'll also have the ability to add a note uh, to explain um, whatever their thoughts were, if they didn't reject it or if they didn't reject it or whatever. Hmm. Um, also, you should fill out this form once per each individual purchase that you want made. So for example, let's say you wanted to uh, attend a conference and uh, attend a, a webinar and then buy two books. So that's, that would be four individual form submissions. Um, just, just for the purpose of, uh, they should be approved individually. So maybe someone might, uh, your manager might say, oh yes on the conference, but uh, these books, we can get them somewhere else and they would reject those separately. It keeps them separate, but also to, the purchasing has to be done by the business office individually, right? If something needs to be bought on Amazon and then another thing on like uh, IT Pro TV and then the conference website, each purchase is made separate. And so to keep everything organized and for the record keeping, um, making them as separate, uh, separate uh, submissions in the DocuSign form. All right, so I'm wrapping up things. First, um, I don't know who's heard of uh, digital badging. Uh, basically digital badging is a way to track accomplishments that you've made for you know, meeting a specific goal or making some accomplishment, um, something that you've met at your job or your school or other areas. Um, think of it like merit badges like these, you know, for Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts. Um, IT is gonna be doing more with digital badging in the future. Uh, we've had the first rollout of it for student appreciation that some of you might've uh, been emailed about. Um, a couple other things that are coming up uh, and this is gonna be one of them. Um, where basically by completing the Learn IT process that you get uh, a badge showing that you completed it. Um, we'll explain that more in the future. So this is just kind of a sneak peek. 
Um, and lastly, I, I wanted to put in a plug in for something a little bit unrelated, since I, since I have you all here and captivated, um, and that's the PACE program. So, so for anyone who doesn't know PACE, it's a university-wide initiative uh, that provides apprenticeship style student employment positions. They're still student employees, but it's positions where their student is specifically working towards something that's kind of relevant to them in their future uh, career goals. Um, this is gonna be expanded and continue uh, at least into the fall semester. We weren't sure about that, but it's gonna be in the fall, so we know that now. Um, PACE is great because, for a bunch of reasons, but for one, uh, the PACE employees pay doesn't come from the department like it normally does, it comes at the university level. So they're like effectively free to us. It's also great, great because any employee can be a, a PACE supervisor, um, not just like managers. So that's useful if you're interested in you know, management experience for the future. Um, managing a student employee uh, is a good step towards that. Uh, Ray asked me to help coordinate IT's involvement with PACE, and so I can help anyone who's interested. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I'll be sending out emails too in the next couple of weeks uh, with more information and looking for people who are interested. So just for now, think about like if you're if you have a job that could be helpful, have some student you know help you out with it. Um, and you're interested to learn more, get in touch with me and I can help you get started. Um, we have a couple weeks until the fall, fall session starts. All right, so we're now open for questions about Learn IT or anything related to professional development. Um, we have Neil and Eleanor from the IT business office who can answer questions related to actual purchasing. And I'm gonna turn off my screen share. If anyone has any questions, go ahead and unmute yourself. There's one question in the chat. Okay, chat. Can we still hire an additional PACE student for the fall? Yes, we can PACE, there's, there's a second session of PACE coming for the fall and we can hire more PACE students. Does anybody know if we still have access to uh, lynda.com? Yeah, I can answer that. So Linda was bought by LinkedIn, LinkedIn and it was renamed LinkedIn Learning. And we are signing on to LinkedIn Learning. As we speak, it's being rolled out, so it's coming. Uh, I think there's a, yeah, good. If I can add, yeah, if I can add to that. Uh, to, yeah, the Who Knew It, formerly Atomic Learning Platform, um, has been discontinued. Um, the, the UMass system is bought into LinkedIn Learning, including our campus. And there's a formal project charter and a formal project coming out of the project management office soon that David uh, Gorfin's working on, I believe, with uh, Ellen Faust. And um, so there's going to be a great opportunity starting in the fall semester. Um, we'll have full access to LinkedIn Learning, all of us, plus our students, faculty, and staff. So that's coming soon. So I think something like that could have been a professional development purchase if, if it wasn't already free coming soon. Um, but if you find a similar website, like I said, a couple, um, ITPro.tv and Udemy and things like that, if you find something that's relevant, um, even though you wouldn't think it's on a class, it could, I, I think, is worth proposing it to, to your boss about to being your professional development. But not LinkedIn, it's free. Any other questions? Another one in the chat. So um, if we want to do a professional development program for ourselves, these forms are based on per purchase. So there could be like five purchase requests for each. So maybe name them in a way that we, that makes sense for the, I mean, they're not going to know. Is it, it doesn't matter that they know what these purchases are, are tied to as far as when they get these requests. So they know they're all combined to for one program. Yeah. So, I mean, it has your name and it has the, so the second question is what's the, uh, the what's the title? So you can you can use that maybe to combine it, uh, but your name would probably be something in particular that, that would group them together. Um, and you know, like I, I think it's and maybe Neil can jump in. I think that one of the reasons for having them as separate submissions is is to purchase them when they're on separate websites. But if you had like again using the book example, if you had two books that you wanted to buy, they're both on Amazon. Maybe you could put them together. Um, The question in the chat, uh, computer-based training um, from Eddie. I don't, I don't know anything about, I don't know anything about that. Um, yeah, Irene says maybe LinkedIn Learning could be a replacement for that. Yeah, that goes back a ways. I mean, I've been in IT for 37 years and I used to do CBTs back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, uh, which was just a DVD, put it in the computer and he would take you through the training. And yeah, that's been superseded by platforms such as LinkedIn Learning and, and uh, 
things of that nature supersedes true CBTs that I'm aware of. Any other questions? I have one other question. So this, this process should really only be used for new per things that we want to purchase or that there's a purchase involved. So if you already have a, a plan underway or you're already doing, you know, have plans for professional development in place, uh, we wouldn't go through this process, correct? Yeah. I mean, the three steps process is kind of um, uh, broad and so it could be helpful to plan something new, uh, but the form itself is really, the form is for a purchase. Um, so if you already have something that has been purchased or paid for, or potentially if you find something free, again, like LinkedIn Learning, if you found something good there, um, you don't have to fill out the form for that. Thank you. Uh, uh, regarding the LinkedIn question, um, is that a contract for one year or has that been extended? Is that just for IT, just to get a sense of that contract for the university? It's, it's three years. We bought in for the whole UMass system, Boston, Dartmouth, and Lowell, we bought in for three years. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Great, it's, it's great training. Yeah. So on that LinkedIn, LinkedIn on learning, do you have to use, you have to create an account or can you use your UMB um, username and password? It's a, it's a single sign on, so you use your UMB. It creates a LinkedIn account, a, a pro, LinkedIn proper account. Awesome. Um, or, yeah. and if you have an existing LinkedIn account, it can, it'll link with that. So it kind of combines them. And there'll be information forthcoming in the next couple of weeks, probably I would say three to four weeks about the rollout of LinkedIn learning. Uh, so stay tuned for communications coming out on that. Uh, I just want to make a comment uh, that I went through this whole process. So John, thank you. It was pretty seamless Good. and I got mine approved. And uh, so the process was that go to the form, John sent me an email, and Max approve it. And then I'm going to give me a call went through the process and it was pretty straight and easy to us. Just want to share with everybody. But I don't know how much it would cover the cost, but uh, that's up to Ray, I guess. But the process was very easy. So I would like to use it and yeah. Okay. Thank you for that feedback, Henry. Um, and, you know, to reinforce to, the, to you, to everyone attending, you know, take a look at this. This is the time, you know, to do this before, you know, anything happens to our budgets. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I don't, I'm not privy to any knowledge of anything that is going to happen to our budgets, but, you know, we all know what we're dealing with, you know, with COVID and whatnot. Um, so, you know, strike while the iron's hot, you know, this program's in place. If something is, is of interest to you, now go through the process with your supervisor and leverage the platform and technology that's been put in place. And uh, let's see if we can get some professional development going. Um, we're all better off if we do it. I know I, I've, my whole career, I've had at least one week of training, you know, my whole career, and I want you guys to benefit from a similar uh, opportunity because I always feel in IT that I always come back, you know, like smarter and working more effectively and efficiently after I have training, and I feel more confident in approaching things, and I, and I really hope you guys um, have the opportunity to, to leverage Learn IT. All right, well, I see 12.30. I'll stick around for anyone who wants to ask any other questions, but otherwise we're done. Thank you much. Bye. Nice, nice to see everybody. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, Ray. Bye. Thank Good you. Seeing you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot, John. Thanks, John. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Hey, John, I got a quick question. Yeah. I click on that linkedin.com slash learning. Yeah. It brought me to a website. It brought me to the page, but when I sign in with my umb.edu, um, it doesn't tells me it's not valid or it's yeah. it's fine. It wasn't integrated yet, Eddie. Okay. Uh, I only send it so you have a sense, you know, just so you can walk around and see what's available. Oh, okay. Um, I get it. it will be again. Uh, it was still in in works, I guess. You know, just you know, uh, paperwork and such. So yes. it wasn't fully integrated um, as a single sign-on, but it will because again, our team looking specifically to uh, add uh, LinkedIn Learning into um, courses, into teaching mm -hmm. and learning for students. But as I said, it's, it will be available to you know 
for everyone. Yeah. And it's really wonderful. It's there, the small snippets, video lessons. So you can assign yourself and also do some hands-on, some projects. Awesome. Thank you so much. Looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, it's very modern, very slick. Um, yeah, so it's a wonderful tool. So I'm very, very happy, very excited that uh, we decided to adopt it. All right, no other questions? All right, I'm gonna...